So studies in our lab over the last few years have discovered that detached and circulating breast tumor cells produce unique extensions of their surface that we've named microtentacles. And those microtentacles match the mechanism by which circulating tumor cells attach to blood vessel walls in distant tissues. And since patients primarily die of metastatic cancer in distant tissues, it might be possible to target microtentacles to prevent them from attaching in those distant tissues. So some of the confocal microscopy imaging we've done, we've been able to perform in live cells. And that technique has allowed us to track the microtentacles and what they do. And in this case, we've been able to see that microtentacles will encircle an adjacent cell and also invade through the blood vessel wall to promote cells attachment to each other and also to the blood vessel wall. So the invention that, we, that we're describing here is the discovery of microtentacles on circulating tumor cells. And work in our lab over the last several years has defined the specific mechanisms that support microtentacles and might be used to inhibit the ability of those structures to promote tumor metastasis. So by using drugs directed against the specific mechanisms that support the microtentacles that we've discovered, that could potentially inhibit metastasis, which is something. Since epithelial cells are responsible for forming barriers in the body, lining of the skin, lining of the gut, that those cells are turning over constantly, but also very interested in maintaining attachment to each other. So when these cells detach, in the case of a normal cell, for healing, but in the case of a cancer cell to spread to a distant tissue, these tentacles form to promote the cell's ability to reattach to each other, or possibly in the case of metastasis, within distant tissues. And since epithelial cells are too big to fit through capillaries, they really weren't ever meant to travel through the blood. So when they get pushed through a narrow capillary by blood pressure, they fragment into pieces. The ability of the tumor cell to either cluster together or attach to the blood vessel wall may help the tumor cell survive to form a metastatic lesion. And that's the portion of metastasis, the part of the metastatic process that we're targeting with new therapies. So one of the things we first did when we studied the tentacles was we originally thought that they were the actin-based structures that are seen in cells that are attached to a surface. Actin is a protein that has been studied for a long time with relation to how it makes cells move across surfaces. So people are very interested in how actin forms different structures, but it turns out in circulating tumor cells, actin actually helps contain microtentacles. So if you use drugs that inhibit actin, you actually make microtentacles worse as well. So we did some experiments to test that, and we actually found out they were completely different. They were not based on actin. They were based on a filament structure known as tubulin. Now the interesting consequence of that in terms of chemotherapy is tubulin is often targeted by a common breast cancer drug known as Taxol, which stabilizes microtubules. And that stabilization inhibits cell division, but makes the microtentacles worse and makes tumor cells reattach at a faster rate. So it will be important going forward to think about how these circulating tumor cells respond and whether some of the drugs that we currently use might actually increase metastasis while we're trying to inhibit their growth. We do have a number of different lead compounds that will actually make the microtentacles collapse to the center of the cell, which then can decrease their ability to attach in capillary beds in the body. So we're testing the drugs that we've developed in the lab in animal models of breast tumor metastasis, but we're also beginning studies looking at circulating breast tumor cells from patients from the breast cancer clinic here at University of Maryland, and therefore trying to see whether some of the same structures are regulated in a similar way in human patients as we see in mice, which will allow us to both guide the therapy of those patients, but also define how the drugs that we're using to target microtentacles might be used in patients.